Throughout history, Rhode Islanders have had a dynamic relationship with nature. Our economy was built on it, our heritage shaped by it, and the health and success of our communities depend on it. Since the Industrial Revolution, the world has been rapidly burning fossil fuels to power our cities, drive our cars, heat and cool our homes, and to produce food and other products. But when we use fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas, we pump more and more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This buildup creates a blanket-like effect, trapping in heat around the world. If nothing is done to halt this process, the planet we leave our children will be hotter. With more extreme weather and flooding, fewer species of plants and animals, and ever-growing threats to the health and well-being of our communities. Rhode Island is no exception and has already been experiencing these realities of a destabilized climate. The Patuxent River starts in Situate and meanders 12 miles to Narragansett Bay. Diverse populations enjoy the river's beauty, but also understand its power and force. In March of 2010, Rhode Island experienced a series of intense rain events that dumped more than 20 inches of rain in just 38 days. This impacted the Patuxent, Wood, and Pocketuck rivers and their tributaries, washing out bridges and dams and flooding hundreds of homes and businesses in their path, including the Warwick Wastewater Treatment Facility. You could barely see the top of those pipes. Those supply air to the biological system. You could just barely see the top of those pipes. At the back of the facility here, we had about 10 feet of water, and then at the higher end of the facility there in my office, uh, six feet of water. It doesn't rain like it used to. Rains used to fall in kind of nice steady rains that soak in nicely into your grass. And now it rains either not at all, or it rains like crazy, you know, rains greater than two inches in accumulating fresh water in a less than 24 hour period. And that's what we call an extreme rain event. Submerged under floodwaters, the Warwick Wastewater Treatment Facility was forced to evacuate. It would take weeks before the staff reclaimed operational control of the plant and incoming sewage could be treated properly. For the first time, Janine found herself in uncharted waters. I've been in this business for about 20 years now and it wasn't until the 2010 flood that I had had to deal with FEMA, a federally declared disaster. And I think at some point the regulators will force us to look at longer planning cycles. We're working on protecting this facility better and when we plan you know instead of a 20-year time frame that we normally would would look at when we're doing facilities plans you need to be thinking like 50 100 years out and what's what's this city gonna look like with its 39 miles of coastline in 50 years severe rain events and inland flooding are not the only water problems Rhode Islanders are dealing with coastal cities and towns are experiencing sea level rise erosion stronger storms and higher storm surges, leaving these communities environmentally and economically vulnerable. In October 2012, Superstorm Sandy hit Rhode Island, and the results were destructive. The first time I drove down Atlantic Avenue after the storm, it was so overwhelming and so depressing, and it just seemed like this mammoth task that how on earth is this community going to be able to come back from this. Uh, 29 of our businesses along the shore were completely devastated. There was a police officer down here on property and he was texting the pictures and it was kind of just like, you didn't know what you were looking at. You, I was looking and I was like, what is, what, are, what is this? And he was, put a sad face and he was like, this is Patty's. After a big storm, the question is always rebuild or retreat. But I think here in Meswamakit, the lesson that was learned was um, redesign, redesign your business model, rethink. Think about the future, think about the fact that Mother Nature is knocking on your front door and this is not going to be the last time. When we rebuilt, we couldn't change the footprint of the building, but what we decided to do was put furniture out there and be made it become a service area. Rather than making platforms and um, decking and concrete forms like we had before. Now, if we do ever have a threat of a storm like Sandy again, we would uh, get containers and put the furniture in containers and take it off property to try to salvage as much equipment and things that we weren't able to salvage last time. Innovative solutions such as these help businesses to reopen after a disaster. 
When businesses recover, the community follows. However, the scars of the storm can remain. It's something that you will never, ever forget. It is a stress level, physically, mentally, and financially, that you just can't even convey to somebody unless you've experienced it. We now, as a Chamber of Commerce, have a plan of action that we would embark upon should another storm of that magnitude hit our community. Because it's not a matter of, will there be another superstorm or hurricane for our community? It's a matter of when. Rather than hurricane storm surge and sea level rise, residents in the town of Tiverton experienced a different problem, drought. Because of Tiverton's makeup, it's very heavily reliant upon the water that's in the ground. We don't have a large aquifer, so we rely on that groundwater. And we saw all of the water sources that we would use for our water suppression for fire dry up. But fighting fires was not the only problem caused by the lack of water. The other concern that came to us was private wells, artesian wells, points that people used for their drinking water. We became aware that several of those were starting to dry up and we were aware of homeowners that had to move out of their homes for several months because they had no drinking water. The lack of water does lead to a health issue and from an emergency management side, that's where I come from because it's a health and safety concern for the entire community. The sanitary systems don't work if we don't have water. Nearby on Aquidneck Island, Newport Housing Authority has taken a comprehensive approach to dealing with climate change and the threats associated with extreme weather events. Through the Senior Resiliency Project, Newport Housing Authority partnered with the Rhode Island Department of Health Climate Change Program to better prepare their residents and staff. The site assessments that uh, the Department of Health did with Yale New Haven, actually walking through and informing the Housing Authority that it would be beneficial for 85 units to maintain, you know, a gallon of water per person per day. It wasn't, you know, a huge inconvenience for us to go out and order these uh, meals ready to eat, MRE bars and such, to order some cots, some bedding. Actually created floor captains, someone on each of the floors on the east and west wings so that we could do wellness checks in the event of an emergency if we needed to. Uh, the elderly service coordinator, she will check with other people, make sure that the prescriptions are filled. Um, we're a phone call away. I like to think we bring comfort to the residents. I think it just helps everyone in that regard. Developing communication protocols and having resources on hand before disaster strikes are vital components to building a resilient community. Newport Housing Authority has also given considerable attention to energy efficiency and weatherproofing their properties. The buildings are all uh, Energy Star rated, uh, and the goal is for a 40% reduction in energy consumption over an average home. Uh, so they've got a, a combination of uh, blown-in cellulose, there's some sprayed-in foam. Uh, we always try to use the more natural products where we can, high-efficiency windows, doors, storm doors, um, and they do stay quite warmer. While reducing their fossil fuel usage, Newport Housing Authority is saving money and protecting the health and safety of their residents. In addition to planning for extreme temperatures, they are also preparing for periods of intense rain and prolonged drought. Another typical uh, uh, drainage feature you see is swale. It helps to catch the runoff from the hill, gets it into the storm drain system, slows it down a little bit. Uh, all the grass that you see around, the evergreens, all tend to be drought resistant. So we do not have uh, watering systems, so everything relies on rainfall. From managing their facilities to engaging their residents, Newport Housing Authority has taken a holistic approach. As our population is getting older and our families are aging in place, it becomes ever increasingly important for housing authorities to start looking at preparedness in this way. Today, Rhode Islanders are thinking differently about the path forward. Residents, business owners, and municipalities have already begun to creatively address climate change. But there's still much more that we can all do to both prepare for and reduce the impacts of climate change. Together, we can make a difference as part of a global effort, strengthening our relationship with our environment and ensuring a sustainable and resilient future for us all.